So what is going on everyone? This is Archery Customs back for another build and we have Trigger Designs 2.0. So I have two completely new Trigger Designs and I have one repeat and I will be explaining how the repeat design can be integrated into the other designs. So let's get started with a demonstration. So here first we have the one piece and this is my string simulator. So you cock the string back, it sits there, and it pulls it out of the groove. This is the two-piece, new design. Bam, just like that. And then this is the classic three-piece, still one of my favorites. Alright, so now you see how they all work. Um, let's talk about the one-piece first. So, um, a lot of pistol crossbows, especially the cheaper ones, use this style. Um, a lot of times they don't have a spring because you don't really need the spring, but it's cooler to have it to where this isn't jiggling around when you're using the crossbow. Essentially, it relies on this groove right here cut into the rail, and the string will go into the groove and lock just like that. And this being in the middle of the rail, it will push it out of the groove to shoot. So this is a really simple design. It's easy to build, it's easy to do. The only drawback is you're relying on the strength of the rail. So if you're using a crossbow, say over 80 pounds, bigger than a pistol crossbow, I would not recommend using this because if you're using wood, you're definitely gonna break it. If you're using plastic, maybe even break it then. So this is for lighter stuff, simpler builds, when you just want a easy, crossbow design so you have you can use spring rubber bigger springs it doesn't really matter and I put in stops to show where the constraints are all right moving on to the two-piece this one uses a rubber band uh, rubber's fine it's just I would not recommend it in certain environments because rubber dry rots and yeah that's not good if you have it breaking on you and this is the constraint pin that stops there. You can see it working. This works in any direction. So you cock the string back, resets itself, same thing, resets itself. It works in any direction. And then you shoot it, bam, cock it back. Super easy. It's a really cool design and I like this. The only drawback is the shape of this has to be very precise because you can see it fits tight here and there but maybe right here where I didn't cut it perfectly it doesn't fit tight it still works and it's still safe but you definitely want to have some good soft skills when you're doing this um, and moving on to the third design is the three piece so obviously it'll be like that you cock the string back resets it and then it shoots it this one is somewhat reliant on spring pressure. Without a spring here, this won't hold a lot of weight, but even with a little spring, it'll hold 150 plus pounds. So really good design. I also wanted to talk about the color coding. So you have the blues, which are the triggers only. Then you have the yellow, which is a transition piece if you have a multi-piece trigger. And then you have the reds. The reds are solely for the string latch. So the idea for the integration would be to take the three piece and the two piece and combine them. So say I took this piece right here that's resetting in any direction and replaced it with this one. Whereas it stops there and you cock it back and it does that. But if you put this here, it wouldn't really matter because this can get stuck if you don't make it the right size. So replacing this with this ideally would be a good thing. I haven't really tested this much. That's why I haven't done it yet. But in the future, say Triggers 3.0, I'll replace this with this and see how it works. So one last demonstration. Here's the one piece. Here's the two piece. Bam. 
And here is the three piece. So that's it for today, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. You know, whatever. More videos always coming. Uh, Trigger Designs 3.0 coming also. That's going to be a fun one. So, yeah. Have a nice day. See you later.